what people are going to think of me if I come out and say that I'm an alcoholic. Mm. You know, I got to the point where it was just like, you know, forget fear. I need, I need faith and, and whatever I do and, and being honest with somebody else and those people showing me like, hey, it's okay because we've been through it too. Welcome to the Small Steps Big Wins podcast. I'm dedicated to helping you take control of your life. Together, we'll explore practical tips, expert advice, and inspiring stories to help you overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Making small changes is possible and can lead to big results. Are you ready? Let's go do this. Hey, Leon, thanks. I mean, I really appreciate you coming on the show. So I am looking forward to this conversation. And you ready to jump in? I am. Thank you for having me. So oh, sure. we jump right into my backstory. Yep. Start with that superhero backstory. Yes, please. Yeah. So kind of like the big reason that I'm on this podcast today. And again, thank you, Sue, for having me. Just over four years ago, Mother's Day of May of 2019, I kind of hit the lowest point of my life. And I was actually asked to leave my house. So leave my wife, leave my kids by my wife. I had been dealing with alcoholism and I knew about it. I just didn't know like to the extent of what I had. And, you know, it was a really, really tough time, but I'm really super grateful because it was kind of like the turning point for me. I went into a room full of people. It had stopped literally the person before me, before the meeting was about to end. So like, I didn't have to read, I'm new. And they had asked anybody if, you know, if anybody has that burning desire to share. And I raised my hand for whatever reason. I told a room full of people that I was in a really bad spot. Like I had thoughts of suicide, everything. It was really bad. I didn't know what to do. And then since then it was just, you know, people coming up to me and, and, and network. It was a whole, it's a whole network of people that just want to help. Not much dissimilar to what we're in now and, and go bonus and merge. So I did that. And like I said, it just completely changed who I am. You know, I consistently show up now. I try not to beat myself up too much, even though I still have that perfectionist mindset that I'm still, I'm also recovering from. So I don't think ever recover from the perfectionist mindset because I think a lot of us have that. So it's more like figuring out how to mitigate it and mm -hmm. work with it as opposed to crushing it. I'm curious. So in 2019, when your wife asked you to leave, what was that weeks and months like after that? And what small steps did you take in that time frame? Because you realized you hit a low, she asked you to leave. Just capture that for a few to encourage us. Yeah. Because you're in a different place now. Yes. So it was, you know, the first, th first thoughts out of her mind were, I'm going to move out. I'm going to take the kids and move in with my parents. And at the time they were living in a two bedroom condo because they were having their house built. And, you know, I didn't know what to say. So I just left. And on the way home, her brother actually drove me home. She told me I was leaving to go home with him. So on the way home, you know, I texted her, I said, look, I I can't have my kids move in, you know, move out. They're in this, they're in school, they're in daycare. One was four and the other one was one. So they were very young and I can't have them move out of the house. I was like, I'm going to go find an Airbnb. Thankfully I went and found an Airbnb for two nights. And then my in-laws called me and said, Hey, come stay on our couch. However long you need. And I was like, I don't want to do this, but if I don't, I'm probably going to run out of money because I can't keep affording to spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a hundred, two hundred dollars a night on an Airbnb. And then from there, the next 90 days is I just went to a meeting almost every single night and I had to get different meetings. I got around different people and I started being open and sharing with people that I had never met before. So it was literally just going to work, coming home, getting a shower, going back out. And then coming home and going to sleep. And I didn't get to see or talk to my kids for almost three months. And then I got asked to come back in the house and I, where I slept on the couch for probably another three or four months. And it was, it was definitely hard, but it's just trying to show up to the person that like, Hey, just coming in and saying hi every day. I still have a reminder in my phone because it's something my wife still talks to me about. Like, Hey, when you come home, say hi to us first. Cause in my mind, like I want to come in, I want to get undressed, I want to get changed. I want to get cleaned up and then I'll come back out and say hi. So to her, it's important. So I try to do that now when I come in, just those little things. Nice. Actually. And how was she during this time? She was uh, pretty beat up, if I gotta be honest. Like it, uh, the mental toll that it, it puts on people, especially the ones closest mm -hmm. to you, you don't really realize until after it's over. And, you know, she had her own struggles the rest of that year. And thankfully through the grace of God and, and the program, like I was able to be there for her, whether she wanted me to be or not. 
Mm, that's important. Yeah. What kind of steps have you guys taken as a couple then to help grow your relationship? I mean, we went to couples therapy in the beginning and, you know, 10 months after I got sober, COVID hit, so it shut everything down. Mm -hmm. So we started going to that. It's really just, you know, open communication now. I, I talked to a lot of guys in the program and they gave me advice and, hey, try this. Hey, try that. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's do it. What's the worst that could happen? So we've opened up a lot of communication, which sounds weird after 11 years of marriage and we're still working, you know, it's constantly working, but our communication was pretty much non-existent for the first seven, I want to say the first seven years. So it's just that open communication. Hey, what can I do differently, you know, tomorrow or over the next three months? What can I do? What's one thing that I can do for you to help this? So we both have a lot going on. I work full time. She runs three businesses. I have a couple of wow. businesses that I opened. We have two kids that play that are in school and play sports. Wow. We have a now five acre farm that we try to manage ourselves as well. So there's not a lot. Of, I've, I've come to realize that me trying to be an entrepreneur right now, where she's in her fourth year of entrepreneurship is very, very difficult. Oh my gosh. You guys have like, talk about multiple plates spinning. So communication has got to be vital for you guys. Did you find that there was a shift in communication on how you communicated? Like, cause communication isn't just about talking mm -hmm. to the other person. It's about asking the right questions. Yeah. A hundred percent. And it's like the big takeaway I got when I left the Austin trip was I need to learn how to ask better questions. The only way mm -hmm. I can do that is I have to learn how to listen better. And it's funny because four years ago when we were in couples therapy and marriage counseling, basically we got a, a paper about or like a, a short reading from, I believe it was Stephen Covey about reflective listening, which is basically everything that I'm trying to do now, four years later, or trying to, to learn. So those are changes that have made an impact on your marriage in, in the communication piece as well. Yeah. Talk about small steps that you took that you didn't think were going to have big results. What was it for you? So. Yeah, I shared, it took me a while to kind of figure out like a lot of things once I got sober. So it took me a year to figure out how to actually sleep again, like without like anything in me, which was very difficult. And then year two, my kids helped me through stuff and we had just moved. It was summer of 2021 20, now. So June of 21, we just moved into the house that we're in now. And my wife and kids go down the shore. We had just fixed up the house the week, the year before through COVID. And, you know, they're going down the shore and I had started following a lot of influential people, just kind of like that mindset thing, just to try and keep things positive. Uh, I know I realize now you can't keep everything positive, but you can still look at things in a positive light. So a guy by the name of Nick Santanastasso, who is a Tony Robbins guy, I followed him and he had one of the, it was one of those things. He, Hey, jump on my, jump on my live call. You know, it's mm. completely free, no obligations. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And got through it. And it was just like one of those things that once you know, when it hits you and it resonates with you, like, if I don't take this action now, I'm never going to do it. So mm -hmm. got to the end of the call and he said, Hey, you know, do you want to join? I said, yes. He goes, okay, what's holding you up? I said, I have to talk to my wife. Cause it's not a small monetary decision. We just, right. moved. I want to make sure like, I don't make monetary decisions without my wife's input. All right. I try not to. So he's like, okay, can you call her right now? And I was like, yes. So I called her with him on the phone and I know that's the whole part of their tax, but it was, it was yeah. helpful for me because somebody like, Hey, just go do it. Okay. And I don't like doing that. Cause otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it. So she said, yeah, go for it. Nice. And I went, wait, what? I wasn't, ex <laughs> I was not expecting it at all. So it was the first time in two years I had asked for something for myself. I have mm. spent so much, like I'm a people pleaser by nature. So I will go out of my way for anybody else. It's hard for me to ask for myself. So when she said that it was, it was just kind of like eye opening. And through that, I, I ended up meeting Jamie Gruber, who leads Go Abundance Emerge. Um, he was the wealth guy on the wealth, lead the wealth calls. Alexander was actually also on those calls. She led the relationship calls. And I just kind of kept resonating with Jamie. And it was like January of 22. And I call, I had reached out to him. I was like, hey, what do you think? I was like, I really want to join Emerge. He goes, are you done with your mastermind yet? I said, no. He said, don't join. I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting that again. But he's like, it's kind of like keeping my focus on one thing as opposed to going, okay. let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. So I finished that, joined Emerge and went to Austin earlier this year. And, you know, things are just completely changing. It's just taking, continue yeah. to take, invest in myself really over the last two years. Yeah, I would say you'd agree with the five people 
who are closest to you that you surround yourself with are the ones that, you know, are going to help you and propel mm -hmm. you. Oh, that that's awesome. So those are some great little small steps. So you finished the mastermind came to emerge. What are some things you're involved in now besides running a farm? <sighs> Holy moly. So, what's on your farm? Wait, I got to ask you what's on yeah. your farm. <laughs> we have two Norwegian dwarf goats that are, they're short, but they're very round. I call them mom and baby because I don't remember names. We have, I want to say, like, I, it fluctuates because we have a fox that likes to eat some of our livestock. So we have anywhere between 10 and 15 chickens right now, okay. potentially more. One of them is a rooster. He's not very nice. And then we only have one duck left. We had 11 and the fox got 10 out of 11. 10 out of 11. Oh, no. Little mama is still out there, still fighting strong. So oh, boy. Oh, my We're gosh. And so you duck. didn't, had you, had you any previous exposure to farm life at all? How'd you wind up with a farm? Like, I'm just curious. So I grew up, I mean, I grew up in a, in a trailer park, but my grandparents had a house on 10 acres. So it was something that I was always used to being around. And when we moved to a small, small town near here, we had a quarter acre and it was great, but we got to this house. And if you looked at the house and you said you were going to buy it for what we bought it for you, I probably, most people probably would have thrown up or walked away, <laughs> but I stepped on the back porch and I looked outside. And I just saw all the land and I was like, this is what I want. This is the piece. This is the space. I can do everything that I really ever wanted to do. And it takes me back to where I was like as a kid. Then my wife wanted chickens and goats. And I was like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> That's fascinating. I would say about uh, seven, eight, 10 years ago, I lived in a development where I was on an acre. And then at the end of the street, there was a farm down there and, and I knew the people that owned it. So every once in a while I'd go down and help her out with the farm and to get the fresh eggs. And they had, they had goats. They also had monkeys. So yeah. I got to take care of monkeys. It was pretty cool. And then my kids got to experience that too. So it's not every day you come across somebody that has a farm yeah, and does something with it. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. What are some habits that you do today that help you achieve the life that you're living? Let's see. Probably the biggest thing for me and the, the thing that I learned through, through really through joining Emerge and all of that and through like AA is, is just constant contact with people. A lot of times when I'm left to myself, I'll just try to, I'll tend to coast more. I don't push myself as hard as I probably could, but when I'm calling people every day or every week and I have to check in, I'm like, all right, that internal clock's going and it puts a lot of pressure on me and I, and I stress myself out for whatever reason it is. But it keeps me moving forward. Yeah. It's back to who you surround yourself with. You mentioned your faith a couple of times. I was curious, how has your faith carried you through your trials? Yeah, it's, it's definitely challenging because I'm not somebody to like, kind of like present it. Like I got, I got a chain cause like, it's just a reminder for myself, the constant reminder, like, Hey, it's there. Like I'm here. But every day, like the first thing I do every day is I roll out of bed and I pray every morning. Uh, and I pray for what, you know, being woken up. It's, it's, it's daily gratitude, gratitude for waking me up, keeping me sober today, and then getting me through the day. And then I go into other people. If I'm struggling, like if I'm in a mentally struggling state, I will pray for myself first and then other people, because I can't be helpful to anybody else if I'm not in like the right mindset. But when now when I'm going into things, knowing that whatever I do, everything on the back end is going to be okay. Like everything's already kind of designed per se. It makes some of the choices a lot easier to make. Like I know I'm not going to go back to where I was as a child. I'm not going to go back to the place where I didn't have heat and hot water. My kids are not going to have to go through that. I know that. Mm. But at the same time, I still have to take the action knowing what's in front of me. And if I stay where I'm at, I'm going to start to go backwards. So now I'm at, like I said, it's a very internal thing that I have to put up to the higher power. My higher power, if I choose God, is, all right, I'm trusting in you. I'm going to take the steps. And I know what I want, but every time I push for what I want, I go backwards. So I'm mm. going to just do those things that I'm feeling, and I'm just going to keep taking a step forward and keep taking the step that makes me feel good. And at, whether it's highs or lows, it's going to work out. My logical brain that says you need to figure it out before you do it, even though everyone always says, you know, fire, shoot, aim, or shoot, fire, aim, whatever I forget it is. Um, well, I've heard the other version is just to like, if you're going from step one to step 10, 
you don't have to know all the other eight in between. You just have to know the first two that come after your step. And then you allow life to play out and just allow that to help you get to your end result. Does that make sense? So sometimes we only have the next step and you know what that is. So just go take that one and then allow all the other things to start falling into place. I think the one thing that's really cool about the eMERGE group that we're in is that, and I've seen this in action, some like those who will take a step and they get stuck, they post it out there to the group. And then there's all kinds of people that will respond that will help them get unstuck to allow them to continue to move forward. So I want to encourage you, <laughs> go take that step because, <laughs> but I, I also want to commend you because you recognize that if you don't go forward and you stay right where you are, you're actually going to start going backwards. And that is very introspective. Not a lot of people mm -hmm. can know that about themselves. And, you know, our own minds, our own comfort zone wants to just keep us in that place. But I know you're going to take the next step. Yeah, that's so we actually had a dinner last night and one of them was a GoBundance member. One of them was an Emerge member. And we got, we've been talking since Austin and we were talking about construction and doing my own thing. And he said, why don't you go find a project? He's like, you know, you, three months, we'll, come, we'll meet again. If you have a project, I'll help you out and we'll see how we can get it done. I was like, I know all the people, I know how to do it. And now here's the thing. I know the next step. I have to call people, which I don't like doing. So now I have to put on my networking hat and, and I love networking, but I don't like doing it for myself yet. So it's so just you getting network for you others. Know. So you What's network that? for others. You don't network for yourself. I love, I connect people all over the place. I like, I just connected Chris with a couple of guys last night. Um, so what's stopping you from doing it for you? Like what's wrong with that? I'm trying to unstick you. Yeah. So it's like, if you do that for others, why don't you just do that for yourself? Yeah, probably because I've, I've told myself for so long that I can't be an entrepreneur. I don't know what mm. to do. Well, that's not true, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's an yeah. entrepreneur and you're an entrepreneur. I mean, that it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing. So now, now I have somebody challenge me to just take one and it's not like it's a huge step. It's one small step that I'm taking. It doesn't have to be a $3 million job. It can be a hundred thousand dollar job. And I'm right. like, I can do that in my mind, I can do that. I can do, I can run a $3 million or a $20 million or $50 million job. I'm doing it right now. All right. So I'll challenge you. Why not the $3 million job? Go for it. I don't have working full time. I don't have the capability to manage a job of that size and still give my employer without taking away from my employer. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, you know what, that's okay too, because at least if you go after that project that you know, you can handle and you get that first win on under your belt, it's not only the win that's there. It's also the challenges that you face along the way. They're going to be not $3 million problems. There'll be $1 million problems, which are a little bit easier to mitigate right? And then you've got people who are going to help you and you know, you build up that reputation and you build up the skill set that you need. And then you just go on and nail the $1 million project and then go find a $3 million project and quit your job. And so, oh, what do you do for your, what do you do for your day job? What's your I'm a job? construction manager for commercial construction in Philadelphia, mostly higher education, like colleges, universities and healthcare. Nice. So that's, that's where are you located now? Where do you live now? I live in South Jersey, but I work out of Philadelphia. So I've been in Philadelphia, okay. New Jersey construction. Yeah. You said you went to the shore. So I used to live outside Philadelphia and then we'd go to ocean city a couple times a year. You have a lot on your plate. Your wife has a lot of challenges and you have challenges. What's your approach to facing those challenges? How do you tackle that stuff? Oh, so this kind of leads back into the, my, my faith is I go into a lot of things now without expectation of a result. And I say that not in the fact that I'm not expecting to get completely nothing out of it. I still go into it with a goal of mm -hmm. what I need to bring for myself, but I don't expect anything from anybody in any situation on the back end. So when I get into a challenge, it's usually my mind wants to first say, run, get away, don't do it. 
but then after, as time settles and, and I go through it, I'm like, okay, what's the, you know, what's the worst that can happen now if it doesn't go well? So just go into it. Every time a challenge comes up, just go into it and think you can do it. Just, you know, if you can't figure it out, I've come to realize, I know a lot of people though, if I do get into a situation where I can't handle it, I can make a phone call to one of, you know, whatever, however many hundred people are on my phone through whether work or a, or, or through this network that'll be able to give me guidance as to what, what next step to take. And just makes it so much more, so much more relieving and easier to, to just continue to go. Yeah. It's the who, not how, isn't it? So you're putting that into practice. That's a big deal to be able to recognize that, you know, that you've got that around because it like, sometimes we have those little voices in our head, you know, that little ego voice, that's that little voice that wants to keep you safe. You know, mm -hmm. that little voice that says, don't do that. Just stay right where you are. <laughs> and then that other voice that says, wait a minute, I've got this, that bigger voice. If we could only harness the big voice and recognize that more, the way you see it and the way you approach it, that you realize there's other people that are around you. That's a big step. It really mm -hmm. is. Is there anything that else that you wanted to talk about today that I might not have hit? Um, I mean, I, I know we talked a lot about like my journey and all that stuff, just kind of like where I'm at today is, you said, I, I mentioned the, the three LLCs that I've opened. So I'm, I, I do operate, I don't operate it. I bought a, an Amazon store, so it's challenging. I'm learning some stuff about it. It hasn't really done much yet, but I had opened an LLC for a short-term rental, which we had a partnership, which I realized as we're going through, we're just kind of, kind of taking a pause on that with everything with with housing prices starting to come down throughout the nation. And we're looking, like I said, we're looking out through all out the United States. Mm -hmm. And then this multifamily endeavor that I'm, I'm working on and trying to find deals. I'm looking in Des Moines, Iowa and, and Jacksonville, Florida, which are like two totally different markets. I've been to both. They're both great. And then, you know, I'm taking a step back from a lot of it. And then after this, after this dinner last night, it's focusing on this business side of things where if I can get this going to a point where I'm now able to step away and do it for myself, all that other stuff that I'm pushing so hard for is just mm -hmm. going to pull along. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to mm -hmm. try to slow it down and, and focus because my mind wants to go shiny objects. So I'm going to focus right. my, on this business side of things right now and, and just keep pressing forward. Yeah. My next question was, how do you think about shiny objects? You know, <laughs> what are them. your thoughts? Yeah, I know they're great. Aren't they? When you come into a merge, I think all of us, and myself included, you get that shiny object syndrome and you can go in so many different directions. So for you personally, what are the pros and cons of shiny objects? The pros are you're able to cast a wide net and figure out what you don't like. And I did that very early on with, with real estate. I wanted to do something easy because I knew how to do it, but I just still didn't have the money. I was like, oh, I can do flips because renovations are easy. If I need to, I can do it myself. I wanted to do short-term rentals. I never wanted to do long-term single family rentals. I just, it mm. doesn't, the cash flow versus the headaches doesn't appeal to me at all. And then I figured out like after it took me four months, but I figured out, I don't want to do anything single family outside of maybe short-term rental down the road, which I did get into, but it was a, like I said, I cast that wide net and just in real estate alone, it was a wide net real mm. estate, but then um, I was able to kind of narrow it down as opposed to the things that I don't like. The cons are it distracts me and it distracts me from the things that I should be doing on a day to day. If I don't have like a clear vision or a purpose, which I'm still struggling with right now. And I think last night really helped me out a lot. I can, I can get to a point where I don't feel like it's moving forward fast enough for me that I'm like, I can abandon this and go to the next thing because the next thing will be better. Even though I just put six months into this one and I'm probably like, two months away, I'm going to stop and go to the next one. And I, I recognize that about myself. So I, the whole thing with not abandoning the merger or, or network groups and continuing to put myself into that, if I do that, I know I've wasted my time and I'm at a point where any moment right now over the next six to 18 months, which is way too long for me and something could happen and it could mm -hmm. completely change the tra trajectory of my family, which hasn't, it's never seen before. Mm -hmm. And what's the thing you mean, like just going down a different path to pursue something else? Is that the thing that could change your trajectory? Yeah. Well, there could be an opportunity that comes up that if I'm right. consistently doing the work to be ready for it, 
mm-hmm. then I'm able to uh, to see it and accept it as opposed to it coming in front of me and me not even realizing it's there. Mm-hmm. Do you see yourself as a visionary or an integrator? I don't know. That's... <laughs> <laughs> So I like big picture thinking, but I'm also very good when it, when it comes to getting it, getting it implemented. I have a lot of good ideas. I, I feel like, so it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's kind of both. Um, my mind wants to say be a visionary because then I can be, I feel like I could be lazy, but I know if I do that and I'm not the integrator, then I won't push myself to do it. I was just curious because you're very insightful on the shiny objects. You knew exactly what the pros and cons were. And I, I would agree with you on those as well. And you know what? Shiny objects can be good because you don't know what you like. And then you can weed out what you don't like pretty quickly. Well, pretty quickly is the optimal word. And then going after those one or two things that are going to produce the results that you're looking for. So. I think in being in mastermind groups, whether you're in Emerge or you're in other mastermind groups, they definitely yeah. help because then you don't feel like you're all by yourself trying to figure this stuff out. So what's one or two books that you would recommend that you think everybody should read? So it's the, it's the cliche, the cliche one for me, cause it's kind of where I'm at. It's the reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing. It's rich dad, poor dad. I don't think I need to explain why. It's an easy read. I listen to it on Audible three times back and forth from work because that's how many times I need to listen to a book to really understand it. I did um, it too. So it's not just you. I read it, listened to it, same thing. Yeah, definitely. Hands down. Everybody um, should read that book. The other one is, it's, it's called Drop the Rock. So it's a, it's a book based on the program, Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's so impactful because Basically that rock is that thing that's weighing you down from making the decision that you want to make for yourself to go to the next level. So there's one part of the story where this girl's swimming through the water and she gets stuck and everybody else can see why, because there's a, there's a rope wrapped around her with, with rocks weighing her down. She can't go anywhere. She can't see it, but everybody else can. And that's the thing that we start to have to identify and something that again, it's really helpful for me is drop all the stuff that I feel like is holding me back, all my character defects, um, and then start to step into the ones that I'm actually, that are actually my strengths and forget, not forget about the defects because I still have to work on them because otherwise they'll come back, but let go of the stranglehold they have on me. It sounds like you have done a lot of work on yourself and that you have gone through a transformation since that very, very low point on Mother's Day in 2019. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I would suspect you are in many ways a different person today than you were back then. So it was a lot of hard work, wasn't it? I, I, I just showed up and did, the, did what people told me to do. It really, it really isn't that hard as long as somebody was telling me what to do, which is what the program does. To, hey, just do what we tell you. Okay, not a problem, no questions asked. Yeah. But you wanted to change. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that think they can't. Did you yeah. ever think at some point that you're not going to make it? Oh yeah. A hundred, hundred percent. It was, you know, I told myself a lot of times leading up to that. Cause it, the, you know, four years ago, wasn't the first time I stepped in AA. I stepped in AA into the first time in 2014. So I knew about it, but it was, there was something that, you know, whether it was fear of being found out, was probably the biggest thing. Fear of not knowing what the future held, the fear of what people are going to think of me if I come out and say that I'm an alcoholic. Mm. It got to the point where it was just like, you know, forget fear. I need, I need faith and and whatever I do and, and being honest with somebody else and those people showing me like, Hey, it's okay. Cause we've been through it too. I look back and like, I didn't do anything for 15 years really. Mm. Like I came home and then I got until I went to sleep and like, I didn't leave the house. I didn't progress myself. I didn't grow. And you know, it's, it's taught me a way of life that I can be in any situation and be comfortable with who I am around anybody in any situation. So like last night we went to victory brewing company and both, you know, Chris was like, Oh no, if I had known, I like, it doesn't bother me sitting here. Cause I know now that I can go to a, a brewery and order a soda mm-hmm. surprise. Yep. I didn't think like that before. Right. That takes <laughs> a lot of strength to do that too. Doesn't it? 
Does that take a lot of, well, you, I wouldn't recommend it early on, but as you grow, as long as you're doing the work and you're, you're very aware of your shortcomings, like I wouldn't go do that every day. Right. Uh, but I can go, I can go anywhere I want now and not have a fear of I'm going to go back out. Because if, if I get to a situation where I feel uncomfortable inside, I can make a phone call right. to, to a, a buddy of mine and say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. So, so take me back a little bit then. Did you go to AA in 2014? So what yeah. made the 2019 transformation different than the 2014? I wasn't, I just wasn't ready. I wasn't willing to be open with strangers. I went How to old were you about then in 2014? How, How old? How old? I would have been 29. Okay. Did you feel like you had failed when you went in 2019? Were you afraid to go back? No, or, not, not, no at all. not at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew if I didn't go back, I, I don't know if I would have still been alive today. Mm. I've heard several people with that story that say the same thing. <clears throat> It's also very difficult when every doctor and everything you ever go through says, no, you're perfectly healthy. Like, so, okay. Like they say, drinking is, you know, it's, it's a slow death, which it is. But when every result says you're, oh, you're perfectly healthy. Then I'm in my mind, I'm like, I'm not doing anything wrong. Right. Other than I'm neglecting everybody else in my life because I want to be selfish. Wow. Well, your story is remarkable. I am so thankful that you're here and you shared it from your story. As we wrap up. What's one thing my listeners can do today that will help them change their tomorrow? What advice do you want to leave us with? Reach out to the person that resonates with you. That's what I did in 2021. Um, and it was through social media and you're going to find, you may, may not get back to you, but if there's somebody that you're starting to resonate with and you start to feel with, reach out and say, Hey, this is something you said that resonated with me. I was wondering if you could help me out. I'm in this spot. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do because I, I know I, for a fact, I cannot do it on my own. So as I start to find people that I, I resonate with, my, my fear wants to say, don't reach out. They don't have time for you. I can tell you right now, even if it's me, like I have a lot going on, but I will always make time for somebody, even if it's a 10 minute phone call or half hour phone call or an hour phone call, because it could change your life. It, could, it changed my life. That's great advice. Leon, thanks. Your story is amazing. I hope it encouraged somebody today. I really do. I know I'm encouraged. I'm actually going to go back and listen to this again because you had so many nuggets of encouragement and such insight. I appreciated it. I appreciate you. I really do. Thank you for taking the time to be with me today. Thanks, Sue, for taking the time this morning. I really do appreciate it because this also makes me uncomfortable. So even though it probably doesn't sound like it. Uh, you did great. You I, did I great. How <laughs> you know, you did great. How can people reach out to you? It, you can quick say it, but it'll be in show notes and everything too. The biggest things probably are LinkedIn. So you can probably find me Leon, right? The, there should be a link. I have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I, I have it all just, I think it's, they said, you said it's going to be in the show notes. It's kind of hard. I don't like it's, but it's longer, which was probably dumb, but it is what it is. You so, can always yeah. change it. A anything, <laughs> any platform, it doesn't matter to me. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you for your time. You have an awesome day. This has been a great interview. Thanks. You too, Sue. See ya. I want to thank you for watching or listening to my podcast. I value your time with me because I realize you could be listening to someone else right now. And I also want you to know that I now offer coaching and consulting. So if you're thinking about creating a course, but not sure how to structure it, or you have a small step you need to take to lead to a big result, but you're not sure what the in-between looks like, check out my website at www.suesaller.com for more information and to request a free consultation. Remember, life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by choice. Take small steps and make today awesome, friends. God bless.